Sweetheart, be reasonable. After all, we're married. But I believe in you. Woman, I've got to put you down. Consider that a divorce. Well, if you can't treat me right, ain't no use of me hanging around. A few weeks ago, I posted a video about how the Code of Canon Law of 1983 seemed to redefine the purpose of marriage. Then I posted a couple of videos on how the new code deleted some important canons regarding mixed marriages. So it therefore would seem to be a reasonable assumption that the Code of Canon Law of 1983 enabled the explosion of annulments that we've seen since the Second Vatican Council. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Code of Canon Law of 1917 and the Code of Canon Law of 1983. Let's see whether we can identify the problem. For the sake of brevity in this comparison, I'm not using all the sections of all the canons. Under the Code of Canon Law of 1917, there are two kinds of impediments to a marriage, and they're called impeding impediments and derriment impediments. Impeding impediments make a marriage unlawful but not invalid. Unlawful but not invalid. What's that sound like? Oh, it's sort of like the Novus Ordo Mass. But anyways, derriment means to make void. Therefore, this video will concentrate primarily on the derriment impediments since they constitute grounds for annulment. The first one is Canon 1067. A man before completing the 16th year of age and a woman before completing the 14th year of age cannot enter into a valid marriage. There is a comparable canon in the Code of 1983 so, underage individuals trying to marry is a grounds for annulment under both codes. Canon 1068 says, Antecedent and perpetual impotence, either on the part of the man or on the part of the woman, whether known or not, whether absolute or relative, impedes marriage by natural law itself. There is a comparable canon in the Code of 1983, so perpetual impotence is grounds for annulment under both codes. Canon 1069 says, they invalidly attempt marriage who are bound by a prior bond, even if it is not consummated, with due regard for the privilege of the faith. There is a comparable canon in the Code of 1983, so with both codes, a prior marriage is grounds for annulment. We already discussed Canon 1070 in the last installment. It deals with marriages with non-baptized persons. A marriage with a non-baptized person is grounds for an annulment. Under the Code of Canon Law of 1983, such a marriage is just fine and can even take place in a Catholic Church. Therefore, with the 1983 Code, the absence of a canon for this actually provides one less grounds for an annulment. Moving on to Canon 1072, clerics constituted in sacred orders invalidly attempt marriage. So clerics who have already entered into sacred orders can't get married. If they do, it's grounds for an annulment. There is a comparable canon in the Code of 1983. Canon 1073 says, Likewise, religious who are professed by solemn vows invalidly attempt marriage, as do those who are in simple vows to which, by special prescription of the apostolic see, there is added a clause invalidating weddings. There is a comparable canon in the Code of 1983. Canon 1074 says, Between a kidnapping man and a woman kidnapped, with designs of marriage, as long as she remains in the power of the kidnapper, there can exist no marriage. So kidnapping is grounds for an annulment. There is a comparable canon in the Code of 1983. Canon 1075 is a little longer than the ones we've been talking about, but it says they cannot validly contract marriage who during the same legitimate marriage consummate adultery with each other with the promise of giving each other to marriage, or even by only a civil act, attempt marriage, who also, during the same legitimate marriage, commit adultery with each other, and one or the other of them perpetuates spousicide, who by mutual physical or moral efforts, even without adultery, bring about the death of a spouse. There is a comparable canon in the Code of 1983. So anyone who kills their spouse and marries somebody else, that second marriage is invalid. Canons 1076 and 1077 of the Code of Canon Law of 1917 state that marriage is invalid when attempted between close relatives. There are comparable canons in the Code of Canon Law of 1983. 
Canon 1079 says, only the spiritual relationship discussed in Canon 768 invalidates a marriage. Well, Canon 768 refers to the spiritual relationship between a godparent and a child being baptized. There is no comparable canon in the Code of 1983. So the post-conciliar church actually allows extremely creepy marriages between a godparent and a godchild. Do you find this disturbing? Canon 1080 says, Those who are considered incapable of entering a wedding between themselves under civil law because of a legal relationship arising due to adoption cannot validly a contract marriage between themselves under canon law. There really isn't a comparable canon in the Code of 1983, but the post-conciliar church does consider adopted siblings to be related, and therefore it still considers such a marriage to be invalid based upon those grounds. The next section of the Code of Canon Law of 1917 deals with consent. And there are multiple canons stating that there must be consent to make a valid marriage. For the sake of brevity, I won't show all of them, but there are similar canons in the Code of 1983. There are a couple more canons in the codes that should be noted. Canon 1119 says, a non-consummated marriage between the baptized or a marriage between a baptized party and a non-baptized party can be dissolved by law, by solemn religious profession, or by dispensation granted by the apostolic see for a just cause if both parties or one ask for it, even if the other is unwilling. There's a comparable canon in the Code of 1983. So a lack of consummation is grounds for annulment under both codes. I should also note that the Code of Canon Law of 1917 says, Legitimate marriage between the non-baptized, even if it is consummated, is dissolved in favor of the faith by the Pauline privilege. The Pauline privilege refers to a marriage between two people who, when they were first married, were both unbaptized. If one of the two converts to Catholicism and then the unbelieving partner wants to just leave the marriage, the church is always allowed annulments in this situation. And there's a comparable canon in the Code of 1983. And the canons are based on the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, both codes allow for the Petrine privilege. And this may be invoked when a baptized person marries an unbaptized person, and then the marriage ends in divorce. The marriage can be annulled by the Holy See, and there comes the name Petrine privilege. So, let's look at the scorecard. These are the only grounds for annulment under both codes. There are actually more grounds for annulment under the Code of Canon Law of 1917 than the Code of 1983. But how can this be? Before the Second Vatican Council, annulments were extremely rare, and now they're commonplace. Well, the number of annulments granted in the United States in 1968 was just 338. That was a time when the granting of annulments were still subject to the limitations of the Code of Canon Law of 1917. But then came the Second Vatican Council. By 1974, the numbers of annulments in the United States soared to 28,918. But that was after the Second Vatican Council, but it was still 1974 before 1983, so the Church was still subject to the Code of 1917. The Code of 1983 was still nine years away. So what does this mean? It means that the post-conciliar Church figured out a way that they could just circumvent the Code of Canon Law. By the time they illicitly revised Canon Law in 1983, they realized that they didn't even need to liberalize the canons concerning the nullity of marriages. They weren't an, an impediment to them and that's no pun intended. The next installment on this playlist, we're going to discuss how the post-conciliar church is getting away with all of this. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installment. We'll be back again in about a week or so with another one. But in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page, which is linked down below. Every day I post additional content that you won't find on this YouTube channel. And please pray for the church. Loving you well